Hey guys, welcome back. Today we're going to be talking a little bit about the Intel stock heatsink. It's gotten a pretty bad rep in the tech community, but if you're simply building just a budget PC like most of you out there probably are, and you aren't looking for any insane performance, aren't overclocking, and it may not even be for that intensive gaming, is it really necessary to upgrade your heatsink? Well today we're going to find out. So for our demonstration today, we're going to be cooling a G4620 Pentium. So that's going to be a dual core hyper-threaded part running at 3.7 gigahertz, no turbo boost and no overclocking. So this is going to be pretty this is going to be pretty standard for most of you out there. For anyone that's building a budget build, the Pentium line, especially the newer generation, is an excellent choice. And this being the most high-end Pentium chip available, you're not going to get any higher heat output than this one. Now right now I have the fan set on a custom fan curve adjusted in the BIOS to make it very quiet. And as you can tell it's not very loud, I don't have any other fans connected and it's basically inaudible especially once the side panel is on. However, let's change things up. Right now it is completely idle. What if we put it under stress? We're going to run an IDA64 stress test. What that does is it pushes the CPU to the max, meaning you're not going to do anything on your computer, any game, any task, that will cause your CPU to generate more heat than this. Of course, provided you aren't overclocking. And once again, Pentiums are not overclockable, so I will not be covering that in this video. Alright guys, our idle temps are of course excellent on our Pentium G4620 with a stock cooler on the silent or on the custom fan curve. However, now we will go to tools on IDA64 here and run a stability test. And we might as well since inside the CPU. Go. Our fan is definitely ramping up a bit. Wow, it's really not ramping up anymore. So yeah guys, stabilizing at about 50 degrees, of course it could use a little bit more time to heat up. However, once again with um, with a budget processor, like anything below an i3 or even one of the slightly lower end i3s, especially like all dual core parts pretty much, you aren't going to need any cooler better than this. Because one has absolutely no trouble keeping up, even with the stock thermal paste. But more importantly, it's not loud at all. You can see our microphone is right at the edge of the case right now. It's not loud at all. And the side panel is off. If we had the side panel on, it'd muffle the noise even more. So yeah guys, pretty conclusive. You do not need it. You do not need that fancy cooler for your Pentium chip. Or for that matter, even any low-end i3. However, let's try, let me try something. Alrighty guys, went into the BIOS and set the fan to full speed. Now it is unbearably loud. If your fan is running this hard to keep whatever processor you have quiet, that's definitely time to get a much, much better CPU cooler. However, as we have demonstrated, this is plenty for any budget build. Any more questions, be sure to ask below. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.